We welcome you warmly uh, to CIBM this morning. Uh, and based on the invitation that was sent, the essence of today's uh, world media briefing is for us to engage the media and explain what the 15th annual Banking and Finance Conference is all about. Uh, I need to do an introduction. With us here this morning is the President and Chairman of Council of CIB, Dr. Ken Opara, FCIB. Good morning, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, to address the media briefing this morning uh, is Mr. Abubakar Sulaiman, FCIB, Chairman Conference Consultative Committee of the 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference, and the Managing Director, CEO, Selling Bank PLC. Thank you so much for coming, sir. Good morning, sir. So with us today is our chief host, Mr. Shere Awujabi, PhD, CIB, Registrar, Chief Executive, CIB. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. He's a doctor, he's not a minister. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so right now we have to get into, dive into the program, and we have to do the CIB item, anthem and the national anthem. So we have to stand up for that. of the Lord and uh, who will lead us in the open prayer. Thank you, leaders in this. Let's stand up for the Lord, please. Our Father and our Lord, we want to thank you for this day, this wonderful day, the day of the media conference concerning our banking and finance conference. Father, we just want to appreciate you because we know that today will be a perfect day in Jesus' name. Amen. We commit every part of the program to your hands, O oh Lord. 
Father, we ask that you come and put a mark of excellence, O oh Lord, in every part of the program in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's be seated. Yeah. Chairman of the Annual Banking and Finance Consultative Forum, Mr. Abu Bakar Suleiman, FCIB, who also is the Managing Director of Telling Bank. Registrar Chief Executive for the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Dr. Shea Awojobi, FCIB, management of CIBN here present, our very good friends of the media, very well represented here, and members of the consultative committee, on behalf of the Governing Council of the Charter Institute of the Bankers of Nigeria, the Consultative Committee of the 22nd Annual Banking and Finance Conference and the entire banking industry, I only want to express our appreciation and gratitude to you for honoring our invitation to this media, media panel. I mustn't fail to acknowledge and commend you for your consistent and positive coverage of our past events and activities. Over the years, the Institute has risen to relevance and reckoning and has continued to record outstanding accomplishments. Its membership has grown to about 147,950. And this represents the largest in Africa and one of the largest in the world, in line with the CIBM mandate to consistently build the capacity of banking professionals and changing the banking and finance landscape through technology and fintech evolution. We are excited to inform you this August gathering that the Institute is set to host the largest gathering of bankers at the 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, the purpose of this media briefing is to intimate you on the forthcoming hybrid 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference scheduled to hold for September 13th to 14th, 2022 at the Congress Hall of the Transcorp Hilton Hotel. It will hold both physically and virtually. The Annual Banking and Finance Conference is a flagship program of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, hosted annually to provide a platform for all stakeholders in the banking and finance industry, which includes policymakers, regulators, operators, academics, clients in the industry to share experiences and exchange ideas on contemporary issues affecting the sector and the economy. The theme of this year's conference is repositioning the financial services industry for an evolving global contest and will attract over 1,000 banking and finance professionals from across the 150 countries in the um, you know, various continents of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, while the chairman of the consultative committee, Mr. Abubakar Suleiman, will be unveiling this program, he will give us a full brief of the program. I wish to use this medium to request for your support and assistance in extensive media coverage of the conference before and during after. We expect robust contribution. We solicit your assistance in the area of good features, straight news, 
press releases, photo publication. Even for the electronic media, we appreciate your comprehensive coverage of the conference, starting from the opening ceremony to the closing ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, as I round up, let me once again thank you for coming, and I wish you a very good and cordial coming. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, before the chairman of the consultative um, conference committee uh, takes on the mic, I would like to recognize uh, Mr. Bill, uh, the second vice president of CIB, following this uh, conference virtually. I also want to uh, appreciate Mrs. Moji Bakari, as who is the national treasurer of CIB, the members of the Article Committee, Consultative Committee on the Allied Banking and Finance. Com um, planning committee who are also following us online. We appreciate members of CIBN all around the world who are following this uh, uh, media briefing. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm aware Professor Deji, the first vice president of CIB, is also online. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much for following us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. So we're good. Um, my president and chairman of council, uh, it is truly your event. You are the reason we're here. Um, but please, I want to seek your permission to first start by recognizing and acknowledging the members of the media who are here today. Um, it's not often that we see this kind of complete house. So uh, the president must have offered you people a very enticing intro <laughs> for you all to be here. Um, and my registrar. And chief executive of the Chartered Institute of Bankers. I think I'm the only one who knows how much work you have put into this. Um, and so let me again, before the president, acknowledge all that you do. And all the members of the governing council that are here, both online and offline, uh, let me welcome you and thank you for making the time to be here with us. I want to also particularly welcome the members of the consultative committee. Um, I know how much work is going on even as we speak. I thank you all for your effort. Um, on behalf of the Governing Council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, the Consultative Committee of the 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference and the entire banking and finance community, it is with great pleasure that I most warmly welcome you to the all important pre-conference media briefing. To our ever supportive ladies and gentlemen of the press, I wish to first use this medium to genuinely appreciate your passion in using your various platforms to enhance the image of the banking industry in Nigeria and through your consistent, extensive and positive coverage of development within the industry. With your support, the banking sector and the financial industry at large has continued to enjoy enormous goodwill, which has helped to build and sustain public confidence in the sector. As the fourth estate of the realm, we are not oblivious of your agenda setting role and the capacity to slant public discourse in favor of our industry, especially at this critical time when a lot of innovative disruptors are impacting the practice and the business of banking globally and locally. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we are aware of the profound role you play in influencing and shaping public discourse and opinion 
and your consistent commitment in supporting us in our drive towards building a resilient economy through banking. We therefore wish to solicit your support in the comprehensive coverage of the 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference that will be organized in a hybrid format and scheduled for September 13 to 14, 2022, with the theme, Repositioning the Financial Services Industry for an Evolving Global Contest. The conference is an annual event and the largest gathering of banking and finance professionals in Nigeria and Africa, with an estimated audience of 10,000 comprising professionals, policymakers, regulators, members of the academia, operators, and other stakeholders in the financial services industry. The objective of the conference is to, among others, provide a veritable platform for subject matter experts and industry stakeholders to drive conversations and unanimously design a clear roadmap towards repositioning the financial services industry for growth and stability. Unlike the last two editions of the conference, there will be one physical location for this year's conference at the Congress Hall of the Transcorp Hilton Hotel Abuja. Participants will also have the opportunity to participate at the event virtually through Zoom teleconferencing. Consequently, we have engaged technical partners to deploy innovative technology to drive the seamless execution of the conference on both the physical and the virtual platform. His Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is expected to grace the occasion with his presence along other dignitaries, such as His Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, GCON, SAN, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Sangulu, Executive Governor of Lagos State, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, Minister, Honorable Minister of Finance, Federal Republic of Nigeria, and Mr. Mohammed Musa, Honorable Minister, Federal Capital Territory, among other invited dignitaries. The chief host of the conference is Mr. Godwin Emefiele, CON FCIB, the Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, while the host is Ken Opara, PhD, FCIB. President and Chairman of Council, CIBN. Mr. Farouk Gumel, the Chairman of Union Bank of Nigeria, will be speaking on the theme of the conference and setting the tone for intellectual discourse that will hallmark the conference as the keynote speaker. A total of 48 seasoned resource persons have been carefully selected to discuss the various sub-themes and provide sustainable and workable solutions. The conference is structured to feature five business and four breakout sessions with highly engaging topics that are critical to repositioning of Nigeria, Nigeria's banking and financial services industry for competitiveness within global context while staying locally relevant. The topics for the business sessions are banking in Africa, the role of AFCFTA, and PAPSS. Nigeria's economy in the last five years, lessons learned and choices to make in the next five years. Workforce globalization, opportunities and threat. Banking and FinTech, the nexus and opportunities. Climate change, the role of financial services sector. The breakout sessions will focus on contemporary and issues including one, sustainable financing, opportunities, challenges, and the solutions for the energy sector. Food security, unlocking Nigeria's potential to feed Africa. Creative economy, scaling for jobs. Harnessing the untapped opportunities in Nigeria's healthcare system. It is worthy of note to inform this gathering of a paradigm shift from the previous conferences. At this year's event, ongoing research, 
finding, research finding on the analysis of human capital attrition in a global context. A case study of the financial services industry will be shared for information of stakeholders and a value addition to the 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, I'm delighted to inform you that in all ramifications, this year's conference will be uniquely different from previous ones. Apart from providing the participant a platform to connect with other professionals and industry stakeholders across the world, the conference promises to be intellectually engaging and stimulating. The business and breakout sessions have been carefully structured to address and provide enduring intervention to the myriad challenges confronting Nigeria's business ecosystem and the financial services industry. In addition, we have firmed up arrangement to integrate the millennials or Gen Y and Gen Z as part of the primary target group to drive conversations at the conference. Prospective participants are enjoined to register through the conference website, which is abfcconference.cibng.org. ABFC, abfconference.cibng.org. On this note, I therefore wish to request for your robust coverage of the conference before, during, and after. For the print media, we solicit your assistance in the areas of quality features, straight news, and photo stories, editorials, and commentaries. For the electronic and digital and online media, we seek a comprehensive coverage of the conference during your daily and flagship news bulletins like broadcast, pre, in-conference, closing ceremony, and post-conference, starting from Monday, August the 15th. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you all as our media partners in the epoch-making venture as we host the 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference in person in Abuja and virtual across Africa and the world. In conclusion, let me see this, let me, permit me to seize this opportunity to appreciate the chairpersons of the various subcommittees of the consultative conference. Mrs. Rizikatu Ladi Ahmed, FCIB, Managing Director, Chief Executive, Astro Savings and Loans. Mrs. Funke Peishiton, Ladi Meji, HCIB, Executive Director, Coronation Merchant Bank. Mrs. Zijoma Uzulumba, Executive Director, Corporate Services, Development Bank of Nigeria. And Mrs. Yemisi Lowo, Adeshola, Immediate Past Managing Director and Head Financial Institution of Africa, Sunda Chartered Bank. And not forgetting, the chairman of the Media and Publicity Subcommittee and president of the Association of Corporate Affairs Managers of Banks, ACAMB, Mr. Rashid Bolarinwa, for overseeing the hosting of this pre conference media briefing. Also, worthy of mention is an indefatigable general manager in my bank, Sterling Bank PLC, Mrs. Mujishola Bakari. FCIB and the National Treasurer of the Institute, who has also held forth in my absence. The registrar, my registrar, the Chief Executive of CIBN, Dr. Sheye Awojobi. You have consistently done the excellent job of articulating and delivering all that is required of the world-class conference. I acknowledge every member of the consultative committee, the CIBN Secretariat and members of staff of my bank, Sterling Bank PLC, for their contribution towards hosting the most successful conference. My immense appreciation also goes to the governing council of the Institute for giving me the opportunity to serve the entire banking community in Nigeria. To the sponsors of the conference, all the deposit money banks, the development banks, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, the mortgage banks and the FinTech companies, I thank you all for providing the funds and support for a successful execution of the conference. Thank you for your very kind attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chairman Conference Consultative Committee of the 15th Annual Banking and Finance Conference. Mr. Aduaka Sulaiman, FCIB. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful address. While his address was uh, 
ongoing, we have the following issues who are following us. <laughs> Uh, that breaking transmission. <laughs> so I want to recognize the following uh, subcommittee chairs who are following us online. This is Ijoma Uzumura, is the chair subcommittee chair research subcommittee. This is Yemi Sinawa Adesola, is the chair logistics subcommittee. Mr. Tobi Kupa, vice chair programs subcommittee. And Mr. Tobi Opalinka, a conference member. Uh, right now, we have to throw the floor open to members of the Fourth State of the World, we have uh, one more question or the other to ask or a clarification to make on the address of the President and Chairman of Council and that of the Chairman Conference Consultative Committee. So we have the floor. You press the button in front of you, identify yourself and the media that you represent and ask your question. Maybe we'll take the questions first. Maybe we'll take it in batches, maybe two or three. But after that, then we'll now have to follow. We we'll just have to be conscious of time. Thank you so much, gentlemen of the press, for your wonderful support to CIB at all times. We appreciate it. So, so then. Good morning. Yeah. I think. It's on. Go ahead. Okay, it's on. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, my name is um, Hope Moses Ashiki, right for bus uh, Business Day. Um, I have a couple of questions here. Starting team, I want to find out the choice of your team. And looking at that uh, key word there, glo um, glocal, glocal context. So uh, you really need to explain what do you mean by, I think it's not a dictionary word. So, <laughs> so we want to understand what um, that word is doing there. Added to that, we want to know the current position of the industry, uh, banking and finance industry, and uh, why you are trying to reposition position it secondly um you said this is the 15th um annual we need to keep the question shorter because okay, of okay. Maybe we should this is one place. the 15th um conference so uh, my question is what has been the changes in the industry since the establishment of this um conference and to thirdly what are your expectations from this conference Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But there's about three questions. So we need to, we need to let's limit the question to one one. So maybe we'll have to, the, the chairperson will have to take this because it's a three in one. Mr. German, please go. Okay. There are some. okay, thank you. My hope is that some of your questions would have been asked before it gets your turn. So, you, uh, and I'll try to make the answer as brief as possible. Um. The thing, when we talked about the global conference, um, I guess my first point is that it's about time we to start contributing to the dictionary, the way the others have been contributing to it. Um, but the word itself is not, it's not unique to Nigeria. Well, what has happened is over time, we've realized that there are certain things that we've gone global with, but in many cases, we lost context of where we were in our own local environment. So even when you are thinking about globalization and global trade and you know, global finance, it is our way of making sure that we bring it back to Nigeria so that we localize it, so that the local is, it is going to be global in outlook, but it's going to be local in context, so that it's not just copying um, whatever we see across, across the world. Um, you ask what was the, um, the current position of the, the banking industry banking and finance, and why do we want to transform it? Well, the truth is that the world is going through a huge amount of transformation, right? Over the last 15 years, technology has transformed the way we do almost everything that we do, almost everything. The way we learn, the way we teach, the way we earn, the way we communicate. 
And banking is not left out of that. And when you think about the fact that 50 years ago, we were just putting the first set of ATMs in place and um, debit cards were effectively new. Most people never had one. Um, and you think about the fact now that even debit cards themselves or credit cards are almost going out of fashion and people can transact using their biometrics um, or their smartphone, you can see that the world has completely changed. Uh, and is therefore left for the industry to change along with it. But beyond the technology that we have now adopted, even the context of what is finance and what should be considered. Um, for instance, we introduced the e-Naira uh, into the context last year. That didn't exist at all. There are consequences of that. And the other bigger issues around um, digital currencies uh, across the world. So the, the industry must therefore continue to transform itself. But for what it is worth, um, we know that the Nigerian banking industry is actually one of the most dynamic across the world. We know that when it comes to payment, there are very few countries in the world whose payment systems are comparable to ours. We know that when it comes to growth, very few industries have grown as well as we have grown over the last 15 years. So there are fundamental changes that we have seen in the industry over that period, but there are also gaps. And it's not left for us to, um, to, to come together to try and um, fix those gaps. Um, but beyond that, I think the banking and finance uh, conference is really about setting the tone, um, setting the agenda for the economic team themselves. So the things that happen at the conference are not necessarily only about banking and finance conference. It's about setting the larger tone so that both government and non-governmental um, uh, decision makers can look to the outcome of the conference and, and use it for decision making. Um, what are our expectations? Our hope is that in a world that is in turmoil, um, that this conference will force all of us to look inward because the answer to our uh, problems are no longer to be found across the border. And you would see that a lot of those that we've invited to anchor and speak at the conference are people who live and earn in Nigeria, who therefore understand our problem better than any foreigner we can fly in to speak. I think hopefully that has answered some of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's a very wonderful response, sir. Okay. 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 Good okay, good morning, sir. My, my name is Bandini Gorosi. I work with Daily Independent Municipal, sir. So my, my question is, uh, you know, it's part of this, but, uh, you know, thank God the MB is here. He made it, made this statement sometimes at a, at a bankers' committee the briefing. But um, the, the industry is experiencing great resignation, and uh, the CIDN is expected to play a particular role in trying to fill in the gap. I want to ask, sir, how, how far are you coping with the pressure, sir, to fill in the gap of the, the unexpected uh, resignation we've been seeing in the banking sector due to uh, technology or whatever? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I let me commend the management of CIB to for sustaining this uh, initiative. My question is on the issue of uh, the millennium that uh, you talked about during the conversation. I just want to ask that uh, do, you, do we have any like shining light among the million that will join in the panel of discussion uh, on the program so that we can highlight it? Then the second leg is about the hybrid uh, event you talked about. And you also highlighted the issue of uh, breakout sessions. Uh, are we expecting a seamless uh, breakout session for those that are going to join across the globe? Then probably so I can know how to engage in the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Christos. Thank you. Um, Any other? Yes. Okay. My name is um, Okay. My name is Sir Okay. From um, issues that are burning in the red corner. One of them is the tax system. And uh, anything about tax but I'm just in this conference, is it the habit or is just an oversight? Thank you. So let's.
time a delay. That's four questions. Mr. Chairman, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Um, Okay, so the first question is on the great resignation and what we're doing about it. Um, I will reference the Chinese word for crisis, um, which also means opportunity. Our attitude is that um, Nigeria is not lacking in healthy young people who are willing and able to work. Uh, and therefore, if we see ourselves losing talent, the best response is to actually focus on converting those young people as replacement for those who are living. I know that all the institutions that I talk to individually are already working on that. But, okay. Hello? Right, but as a collective, the industry is also putting together a plan that will enable us sponsor individuals who are looking to acquire skills in the area of technology and all the other fields where we have skill shortage. Uh, the thinking is that um, that actually turns the crisis into an opportunity rather than something that we, we worry about. Um, as for the millennia, yes, we do have young people who are participating. Uh, I was trying to look at the list, but I couldn't tell from the list the age of the people, so I don't want to go and call any Agba and call them person a millennia. <laughs> but I yeah, tell you that yeah, we set out deliberately to actually attract quite a few of them, and some of the themes were designed to attract them. We do have a theme that is on banking, um, right? I think the people who are more, so we do have a Mr. Ayodeji. Right, who is coming in, and Mr. Arika Wave from Tribe Agri. Yeah, so we work quite a couple of them. So, yes, your, the answer is yes, we will have a few of them. Um, rest assured that the CIBM will hold an excellent technical event. I want you to rest assured. Uh, we have the people, we have the strategy, we have the resources. There is no reason why the hybrid event should not be seamless. I'm, I'm confident I will be able to deliver that. Um, why have we not talked about tax? You know, there were probably 50 different things we could have talked about. Um, we spent about six weeks to try and bring it down to what are the things that could best address our most immediate problem. And these are the ones we settled for. It's very difficult, for instance, to, dra to drop food security and talk about tax. It's very difficult to drop the great resignation and the, you know, the global workforce. You know, there's every single one of them just plays an important role. And sometimes you have to choose, and, and we choose the ones that we think are best. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, let me just. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, just to add to what Sleman has said, um, Essentially, I think you talked about um, the millennia, which of course is um, very dear to us, even at um, CIBN. Um, in addition to what he has said, is also the fact that um, you know part of what I said during my you know um, inauguration is the fact that um, we said we are taking banking services to you know them, not the other way around. And so you are going to you see a couple of activities. Most importantly is the fact that um, the brain drain is not just limited to the industry, it's a, just um, a national thing. But the key point is that I think the industry is also rising to those uh, challenges as much as possible. I think it's about training and providing flexibility you know, where these people can work in a very convenient um, and conducive environment. I think that's what appeals to this, um, you know, uh, community. And we think that that's very critical. You're also going to see something coming from Charlotte Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. We're going to have annual millennial, um, you know, forum. And so basically for them, speaking to um, have them have that forum, and you will see the advisory session, mentoring session that will be activated during that session to also help them as much as possible. The program continue to be relevant in content and value. Um, you know, issues relating to the shared energy, I mean, shared um, agency network uh, facilities, the SANEF, where the banks own that drive inclusion 
is part of what has, I mean, um, came out from the previous uh, programs, you know, of um, the Anna Banking and Finance uh, Conference. I think in one of those, um, uh, you know, the conferences also, we had the speaking to infrastructure and the need to have an institution that will uh, administer that. And of course, you can see that um, there's um, a, an infra code that is already coming up to take care of that as much as possible. Um, also, to state that um, CIBN is looking to create, a, you know, what we call a human resource center, particularly that will help to build the younger ones, but those that come fresh from, you know, school and those that have just. Um, you know, finish their youth service that will now begin to be, you know, the bedrock for the people, that, I mean, the new generation of people as much as possible. So the last point again is to say that um, the industry is corporate, you know, corporate res social responsibility and very responsible. They continue to adhere to compliance, of course, um, CIBN believes that ethics and professionalism must quite be very, very important. So as it relates to corporate organizations, I want to assure you that the industry is compliant in fulfilling its obligation, paying its taxes, paying its other statutory obligation as an, you know, when due, you know, but where there are differences, they try as much as possible to amicably sort it and they don't shy away from doing that. Thank you. Thank you, President and Chairman of Council. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next batch of questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Kutal Basabasekon, Shared TV. I also want to commend the CIB, this 15th edition of its uh, Our Banking and Finance Conference. So, uh, my question, the first question I'd like to ask is, what do you find a central location of Abuja? Because the last conference we had a Lagos, um, uh, which was the CIBN hall here. And um, what do you find that? Could it be part of the challenges we're having with logistics and um, in this conference, we've had the sustainable financing initiative of CIBN to build capacity. I would like to know from the president how that is going because. Uh, the chairman of the Central Planning Committee, uh, Mr. Walker Suleiman, stepping back, they play very big in sustainable financing. And that's one area Nigeria really needs to uh, sustainable development. So, how's that going with sustainable financing, which is one of the previous uh, national conference? And finally, Mr. Farrell Gumel as the keynote speaker. So, <laughs> Thank you. Keep our questions warm. <laughs> <laughs> the code. Yes, so nobody should reach the code any longer, please. One question, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, my name is Bukola Ido. I work for Leadership Newspaper. Finally, the mic turns to me. I've been raising my hand for a while. For a while. Yeah. Good morning again. Um, one of my questions has been answered, uh, but then I would also like um, for the chairman to speak more on um, how um, crypto and CBDCs, um, uh, the discussions that will be around this uh, and how it's affecting the banking industry. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Joseph Olawa. All right, for ICII, I'll be reporting. So the banking industry is also growing. There is also the fintech. So it's more about technology and how we can and some of this. Um, so there's a synergy between the banking industry and the fintech uh, because there are certain similar services that the banking is offering. And also, prior to that, I want to challenge to also address the issue. Uh, Scar and monetary you know, issues that we have. I don't want to dwell into them, but if you could. Uh... <laughs> no, 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 I don't think. I don't think that's it. But, okay. Can I go? Yes. Please go. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, you also bridged the code. So we'll answer the second yeah, yeah, question. Exactly, exactly. Only the first question will be answered. <laughs> um, what informed the uh, Abuja? Um, so the conference is not just about 
people listening in. It's not just about the speakership and the listenership and the panels. It's also about interaction. And in the prior year, that ability to bring people together into a single destination meant that there was, there was a lot that went on that couldn't happen if you were virtual. So we are trying to pull people right back again to the center so that over a period of two to three days, a lot of very productive relationship will be formed. So that's, that's really the primary reason for having a single central location. Um, I will let my president speak on sustainable financing. And then if he asks me to contribute, I'll contribute because I think you were, you addressed that to him. Uh, what informed the choice of Farouk Gumel? One thing we were clear about was that we wanted the people that can speak to us about the things that affect us the most. And like every other conference, we originally went for big names and we were, you know, thinking of bringing in, you know, international names that will carry media. But we then started asking ourselves, what are we trying to achieve? Are we trying to gain attention or are we trying to gain insight? And our understanding was that if you want insight instead of attention, then bring someone who is eating it, drinking it, living it, and bring someone whose tentacles cut across as many industries as possible. And if you check out um, Farouk Gumel, you will find out that he's got um, experience across many multiple industries. That is why we thought he would be the right person for us. Um, today, every country is struggling. His own, I've been fighting his own fight. Uh, let us face our front and fight our own fight. Um, how is the crypto industry and CBDC affecting the banking industry? Let me remind us. There are about four important functions that the bank will perform. The first function is that the bank will perform the function of, for the purpose of the uh, larger audience, call it payments, right? There's a little bit more to it, but at the end of the day, you want to be able to move money from one person to the other when you need to move it as cheaply as possible. Within Nigeria today, there is no platform, crypto or otherwise, that is remotely close to what the banks can deliver. The best way for you to move your money today is through the banks. It also happens to be the safest place for you to keep your money today. So I don't know what others are doing with crypto, but if I want to move money to my president today, I will use my banking account. It will go through NIBS. It will hit his account. It will be instant, period. The second important function that banks perform is the function of lending which is intermediation. You find money from somewhere who doesn't need it yet and you pass it on to someone who needs it either to run a business or to pay for something. Again, I may be missing it, but as far as I know, the banks are still the one dominating that space, performing that services. And I think that will remain the case for a while. The third one is to help people build wealth. And that is what happens when you save money and we'll put it in investment for you. Apart from MMM, and the other, <laughs> let me put it differently. I will not advise someone that I love to take their money out of a bank and go and put in any of the alternative investments that are here today, unless you're a very rich man and you want to risk a little bit of your massive wealth. So again, as far as I know, the general public, the safest place for you to save money and build your wealth is through a regulated financial entity. Right. And finally, there's advisory, you know, again, I don't know who you will ask for advice, but I would prefer to ask someone who is a member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, okay I, will, um, yes, I will ask the, uh, the registrar chief executive who will actually talk on um, sustainable banking. Um, it's an area that um, so much has been done on that, but before he does that, um, let me quickly add that um, in Nigeria, we don't, um, um, cryptocurrency is not allowed. What we have, um, of course, you have the CBN in Naira, and it's very important that just, just like um, the CEO has said, which is the virtual wallet that um, is um, being used. So the other um, platforms are what he has already talked about which is the permissible um, platform for you to transmit. And those platforms are working extremely very well. You mentioned something that is very fundamental. 
it's only in Nigeria and some few countries that you can consummate online return transactions. You can't do that even in US yeah. as much as possible. And so that tells you clearly how far we've gone as much as possible. Again, on the you know, synergy between um, the, you know, the banks and the, the fintech, I can assure you that that is um, you know, currently happening, happening very, very effectively. You see collaborations, you see um, partnership, and that's why that industry is growing very, very well. Um, the next couple of uh, days, will also be um, having a, a memorandum of understanding, you know, with the players in that sector as much as possible. But clearly, I think the industry has evolved so well. So that's, that's to say that um, there's kudos for even CBN and the players and as, as well as um, the banking practitioners, they've done so much on that. So I would then yield to um, the Registrar Chief Executive, Dr. Shea, would to talk on the green banking as much as possible. Thank you very much, um, Mr. President, and the Chairman of the Consultative Committee. Mm -hmm. Since 2012, um, the Institute has taken sustainable uh, banking as a major um, issue and capacity development in that area has not stopped. Um, the first that we did, apart from being active in the committee that brought about the issue of sustainable uh, banking policy or finance policy, was to have a partnership with IFC, uh, the International Finance Corporation and CIBN went into training the trainers in sustainable uh, banking principles and finance. And those ones that we train are now going further to train others within the industry. After that, the Institute has included sustainable banking in its curriculum as a certification program. Today, we have people who write sustainable finance certification exams. And this will continue. And indeed, when that syllabus was being put together, we brought in PwC, uh, one of the big four, to be involved in this. And beyond that, we have partners across the globe. Um, the Charter and Sub Bankers Scotland, the Charter and Sub Bankers in UK, and other institutions, even here in Nigeria, the NSE, um, NGX now, you know, in terms of green financing, and even the FNDQ, so we are involved. These are some of the initiatives we are taking to ensure that that, uh, that you call sustainable banking is, um, we have enough capacity in that area. And if you look at this conference, one key area there is a climate change issue. And if you drill it down, it's still part of what we're talking about, the environment, the changes that are taking place, and want to deepen knowledge in that area. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. Maybe I'll be the last person. Oh, interesting. So that we can round up this conference. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. My name is Joshua Murakio. I work with Lagos Television. Uh, perhaps the exigencies of time will the state governments take action on the immediate as against um, looking forward to hearing from stakeholders when they prefer solutions. So what, um, the fallout from last year's or the last um, conference you had, uh, mentioned two or three things that you think government has taken in and acted upon. Uh, I'd like to know. Thank you, Murakio. Yeah. Registrar. Registrar. Thank you, Thank you very much, um, well, yeah. Joshua. Uh, the last conference, if you recall very well, we had three key people that spoke. 
um, at the opening ceremony. We brought in the uh, president of Rwanda. The president of Nigeria spoke from the state house live. And following day, we brought in the president, I mean, the vice president of the country. Those three uh, speakers set a tone for the Nigeria that you know today as leader and the Afrocentric nature of our economy was one of the issues they spoke about. If you look again into that particular conference, we paid very serious attention to even um, the capacity development and the impact of the creative industry. The creative industries, you recall, um, is a growing one, is evolving in Nigeria, and the role that banks played majorly. Today, go and look at what is happening at the National Theater. The entire banking industry had put in over $100 million into reviving the National Theater. And this is one area you can, again, see as part of the impact. Again, when you look at um, uh, the SMEs, it was one of the issues that uh, was discussed and been the engine room. Just recently, the Institute with ACAM brought together all the organized private sector to have engagement. So as we move on, uh, the, the Institute with this conference, after each conference, there is always a compendium of um, all activities. And again, uh, the, what do you call it? Um, decisions or resolutions, which will pass across to all stakeholders, the regulators, the operators, and even government, for them to use in policy, enunciation, and correctness of certain things. So I don't know if I've uh, satisfied you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the microphone will still uh, be on you, sir, to give the closing remarks and appreciation for this uh, wonderful uh, uh, Let me start by first thanking the author and finisher of her fate, uh, the God Almighty, who made today a day that is possible for us. Uh, glory be to his name. I also would like to sincerely thank the governing council, uh, thank the president and chairman of council and the office holders. Uh, it is not enough to desire uh, to do this, but to give the support that will give us that uh, traction for value. We want to say big thank you to you, sir. Um, we also uh, would like to thank the consultative committee uh, led by uh, the chairman, uh, Mr. Abu Suleiman. All of you may not know that apart from being the chairman of this conference, he also sits as the chairman of the competency and standards of the bankers committee uh, um, capacity and competency within the industry. At the same time, uh, Mr. Abu Suleiman has given us that kind of leadership that is impactful. Um, we want to sincerely thank you and members of your consultative committee. Too numerous to mention, but permit me to thank each of those uh, uh, subcommittee chairmen uh, we have the Logistics Committee, this is Adelo. I want to thank you very much. We have the uh, Research Committee, this is Ijoma uh, Ozulumba, thank you very much. We also have the programs and events uh, planning. Uh, those who put this, that is becoming very interesting. The word local, if you Google it, it will give you the meaning 
Glocalization is a concept. Glocal is a concept. But in the last one or two months, meaning is a dictionary meaning now it has an oxford digital meaning so i really want to thank that committee because when it came up we saw the same thing we are seeing now i got a letter yesterday and the letter changed the word broker to global i just accepted that it is what they think some people have called out to say you made mistake <laughs> oh you say there is an error in your word we all you cannot just correct everybody, but that is what the institute is. The, is the echelon of knowledge in this uh, context. So we really want to thank you for this. Uh, again, I must express my appreciation of the institute to you people, uh, our best friends, the uh, men of the fourth estate of the realm. We want to thank you very sincerely. Uh, you have been a partner for value since I've ever known this institute and even within this industry. So today, you just is a story of value. Thank you so much for making today a uh, wonderful one. And of course, we are not surprised. The chairman of uh, the media and publicity is um, is one of you, yes. and so uh, I'm sure you love him, and you love everything he stands for. So, uh, Alaji, thank you so much. I must also thank every managing director of banks in Nigeria, and of course, you know that if not for these people, financing of this would have been a challenge. And on top of it is the Central Bank of Nigeria, the governor of Central Bank. We really want to continue to thank him for giving that leadership for value, the NDIC and every other aspect. When somebody asks about resignation, that research that is there, led by uh, Mr. Bubaka as chairman of competency and standard, he wants to deliver that to the entire industry. So why are they resigning? I've received one on my table today before coming for this conference. So it's everywhere. So, but the attrition within the financial services industry, within the banking industry, we really want to know, is no longer um, uh, during our days when they say, I'm checking out. It's not just checking out now. Where are you checking to? That part or whatever. So to my colleagues, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody. Please, until it is over, it is not over. Nigeria must be great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The closing prayer. Sir, I was told you uh, to give the closing prayer as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to be <laughs> um, May I request humbly that I ask a Muslim brother yes, yes. to pray for us. Mm. So I return back to chairman <laughs> of the committee. Okay, so I am I am you for bringing this wonderful event to a successful closure. And that all our colleagues and everything that we discuss here today will be accentuated for the good of the industry and Nigeria as a whole. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, we are all in. Rahmanir Rahim, Malik, Yom Yidin. Ya kana bulu wa ya kana shori. Ini na surat al Mustaqi. Surat al Ladin anam taalehi. Ya al Maktub ya alehi wala shori. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, well done. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yes, sir.